Hi everyone, we've been talking about matter. And matter comes in four states. Now, when we say states, we're basically talking about solid, liquid, gas, and plasma. And we'll talk more about plasma. That's one that may be a little bit more unfamiliar to the others. But we're referring to water is the thing that you and I are most familiar with that we are used to seeing in a solid, liquid, and gaseous form. And um, these are common things. We see things change from a solid to a liquid to a gas and back again almost daily in our everyday life. When you change state, you do it by adding or removing heat. When you add heat, it something can change from being a solid to a liquid to a gas. And when it is a gas and you remove heat, you can, can um, condense it back down to being a liquid and then solidify it down into being a solid. So it is addition of heat or kinetic energy that will actually make things vibrate further and faster from each other. And that's how you change state. When something is in a solid state, all the molecules are tightly bonded, liquid a little further apart, and gas further still apart. So question, we've been talking about physical and chemical changes. When something goes from a solid to a liquid to a gas, is that a physical or a chemical change. Which one is it? It is physical, and it's physical because you're going to have exactly the same molecules. You are just changing the distance between them. So that is a physical change. There are actually specific definitions for a solid, a liquid, and a gas. A solid is something that has a definite shape and a definite volume. Everything from bricks to rocks to two by fours have definite shapes and definite volumes. You cannot, you cannot squish them or push them and make them take up less volume. They are solid things. That is what makes something a solid. A liquid has a definite volume, but no definite shape. Very often with liquids, we, we say that they take the shape of their container. And that's what happens when we pour milk into a glass, water into a bowl. Gases are unique. They have no definite shape or no definite volume. Now what that means with no definite volume is that with a gas, as in a cylinder in an engine, if you have gas molecules in that cylinder, you can compress them when that piston comes down. And with that compressed piston, you can actually change the volume. You can make those gas molecules closer and closer and closer together. They're still a gas, but they have occupied a much lower volume where here they had a big volume. You cannot do that with a liquid. Liquids are said to be non-compressible. Um, and you cannot do that with a true solid. Plasma is the fourth or the highest energy state of matter. And some books don't even include plasma as a state of matter. And I understand why. It's because when something becomes a plasma, it no longer is a regular atom. A typical atom has a nucleus, that hard little chunky center that contains protons and neutrons. And then there are electrons that are whirligigging around on the outside. And as long as something is a solid or a liquid or gas, each individual atom has this basic structure. But when you get things really, really very, very hot, what happens is there is so much kinetic energy, there is so much speed that the electrons are ripped off of the nuclei. They cannot stay attached to the nuclei anymore due to the high speeds involved. And so what you end up with is a soup of nuclei and then little negative electrons floating around together. It is no longer constructed matter. It's all the pieces. It's sort of like if you have a bag of Legos, you do not have a Lego Death Star. You just have a bag of Legos. It's no longer made into anything, but you have all the raw materials there. 
Plasmas give off light and they conduct electricity. Now, plasmas are things that can be very, very common. A candle flame, a flame in a fireplace, those are plasmas. When you rub your feet on the carpet and you jump a spark across a doorknob, that is a tiny little spark. That's a bit of plasma. You take this spark and you supercharge it into lightning, 100 million volts of electricity going from the cloud to the ground and vice versa. That is plasma. High energy gases up in the atmosphere that make the auroras, those are plasmas. Stars like our sun that are very, very hot, they are actually plasmas. Uh, welders cut with a plasma torch but they don't always have to be really hot. Uh, fluorescent light bulbs. If you have a fluorescent light bulb in your home, that is actually a plasma. So these things give off light. We have them all over our homes and they are not normal matter. Now let's go back and talk a little more about the solids, the liquids, and the gases. The true solids in chemistry, remember this is a chemistry class, have a definite three-dimensional geometric crystalline structure. So a chemical solid is something that down inside of it has a geometry to it. The atoms are not just willy-nilly put together. The atoms are put together in a wonderful arrangement, in a wonderful pattern that chemists and scientists have been able to unearth. One of my favorite things is table salt, little sodium chloride table salt. And next time you are sitting there looking at your salt crystals, if you haul out a little magnifying glass, look at them very, very closely. Because very close up, salt crystals are cubic. They are these lovely little cubes. And these lovely little cubes are a ramped up larger version of what's going on on an atomic scale. You've got sodium atoms bonded to chlorine atoms bonded to sodium atoms and these all come together to make beautiful cubic square shapes. That is a true solid in chemistry. When we talk about crystalline solids which are also true solids this is what gives us beautiful shapes of gemstones diamonds. Um, diamonds in nature, uh, when they're produced, they look like this. And these are clues to how the atoms are bonded inside of these things. A diamond, half of a diamond looks like this. This is called a tetrahedral shape. And what happens is if you take the top of this and you lop off the top and you cut some facets in it and you plop it on a ring, you've got a beautiful diamond ring. Quartz crystals, many of you have seen quartz crystals. Well, that is a representation of what's going on on the atomic level. That's the way the silicon dioxide atoms are arranged inside quartz. Emeralds, also gemstones that have a nice regular recurring pattern. And we see that pattern in the large scale of what's going on on the atomic scale. Liquids are non-compressible. I mentioned that a little bit ago, and that's why they are very, very useful in hydraulics. Now, hydraulics, you've got hydraulics in your car, in your automatic transmission, your transmission fluids, um, your brake fluids in your car. And what we use hydraulic systems for is to transmit a force through this fluid from one place to another. Let's talk about your car brakes. What happens is when you step down on your brake pedal, there is a little piston that is going to push on a, this is a stylized representation of what's going on, on a whole collection of, of pistons and tubing that's going to go from your brake down to the actual brake drum or pads or whatever. It's actually going to stop your wheels from going around. But inside of that, there is brake fluid. And this brake fluid, when you push here, the push gets transferred all the way down from one end to the other. And this is via this non-compressibility of the fluid. The push goes in here and the push is transferred all the way to the next piston in line. 
Um, same thing happens in transmission fluid. Now, this wouldn't work if when you pressed on the fluid, if you could compress it like you could gases. Gases you can compress and make them have less volume, but you cannot do that to liquids. You actually make the force travel all the way through the fluid. There's another weird thing out there when we start talking about solids, liquids, and gases, and these are called amorphous solids. Amorphous solids are things that look like a solid, but they're not solid, according to the official chemistry definition of a solid. Because in chemistry, if something is going to be a solid, it has to have a three-dimensional crystalline structure. Well, here's the thing. A glass is actually a super cooled liquid. Many of you may have seen a glass blower work at a craft fair or, a, or something like that or a museum. And it starts out as this liquid silicon dioxide. And when it is allowed to form its own crystalline pattern, silicon dioxide will form quartz. Beautiful, beautiful reoccurring crystalline patterns like this. But if it cools very, very quickly and we force it to cool quickly by, by making glass out of it, it has this weird wacky shape and it's not this nice regular uniform shape. So this non-regular shape is called an amorphous solid. Now, what's unique about this? Fluids, because this is a super cooled liquid, fluids flow. And I don't know if you've ever been in an old building, but old buildings sometimes are going to have old glass, and this old glass will often look a little ripply. And that ripply glass is because slowly over time, the glass is falling because of gravity. It may take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years for the glass to actually move, but it is not a true solid and the molecules are slowly sliding past each other. Other examples of amorphous solids that you are familiar with, but you may not be aware of it, are all of the lovely plastics that we deal with all the time. Polyurethane. Polyurethane is used as to finish boats and uh, things like that. And it looks pretty solid, but it's a big gloppy molecule. Um, it's flexible. Amorphous solids very often are very flexible. So this gives us all these lovely plastics. Right? Nylon, nylon rope. Nylon rope stretches and does all this lovely stuff because it is an amorphous solid. It doesn't have a tight crystalline structure. If it had a tight crystalline structure, it would not be flexible. And we need that flexibility that we get from amorphous solids. Neoprene, neoprene used in wetsuits and things like that. Again, because of the flexibility, because it is a super cooled liquid, these super cooled liquids are actually very, very flexible. And we need those in our modern world. So there's lots of different ways you can organize atoms. And those are all of those lovely things. <laughs>